Alright, section 3, Black, Alchemist's Gift 1, instant target creature gets plus one plus one, your choice of death touch or lifelink. So you can have a, have a small thing, have a small creature, eat a larger one, or your creature is going to survive the combat, gain a nice chunk of life. What makes Alchemist's Gift exciting to me is not the fact that it's a combat trick, but it's that there's a life gain matters archetype in this format. So this would go from, in, in that archetype, it would go from like really bad filler to being something that you might actually want. Arcfiend's Vessel, one black, one one lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard, or you cast it from your graveyard, exile it. If you do create a 5 5 black demon creature token with flying. So this card would have been real dumb with Lyris if they had just like left that around. And uh, I think it still will be dumb with Lyris. I think this card's gonna be good. I'm gonna play this card. I'm gonna play this card a lot. I'm gonna make a lot of demons. I hope y'all are ready to watch a lot of demons because in the early access event, I'm gonna make so many fucking 5-5 five, five demon creatures. Yeah. This is obviously sweet with the, um, the three mana return up to two creatures. The, with combined casting cost three or less. Good with Unearth and Modern. Yeah, yeah, Unearth already cycles. Totally fine. Yeah, Call of Death Dweller and Luris are the two standard enablers that make this card look real interesting. You can get two with Call. <laughs> you could have like 10 power, 10 power flyers on turn three. How does your opponent beat that? Two removal spells? Nobody has two removal spells. Unbeatable. Bad deal. Four black black. You draw two cards and each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses three, two life. So w the, the place where bad deal really shines is probably two at a giant. <laughs> where, you, where you make them discard four cards total. Both teams would lose four life, though, so that's uh, either really good or really bad. Blood Glutton. Yeah, I'm probably not going to play this one too, super often. By the time you get into the super late game, once you're in top deck mode, once you once you can actually like cast your six mana card that doesn't impact the board, your opponent's got a, like, a really good chance of having already played their cards. If you ever get the two best last cards and get to draw two cards, then you're gonna feel amazing, right? If you get to actually combine Divination and Mind Rot and pull it off, it's gonna be like the best thing ever. It's gonna be like a miniature ultimatum. It's gonna be like a mini cruel ultimatum that you pulled off. But a lot of the time, you're gonna be, you're gonna be casting a six mana Divination, and that fucking sucks. <laughs> that's just that's just really not exciting. Know that the more bounce you have, the better the late game discard gets, though. Blood Glutton, five mana for a four three life link. Yeah, it looks like the the life gain the, the life gain matters uh, effects are gonna be in white black. It's gonna be a white black archetype in the format, limited format. This one's gotta be really good, right? It just like triggers the if you gain three life or more cards all by its lonesome. That art is sicko. What better way, right? What better way to show an actual blood glutton than have it taking down an actual dinosaur to, to get its feast on? That's sweet. Cage zombie. Three mana for two, three. Two mana, each opponent loses two life. Activate this ability only if a creature died this turn. Huh. So kind of fillerish, huh? Kind of fillerish, but it is a zombie, and the zombie uh, creature type can matter sometimes. Carrion Grub, 3 to black, 0, 5. It gets X plus X plus O, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard. When it's battlefield, mill 4 cards. Hmm. I guess this card's fine. 
Like, Wisconsin Crab is, like, fine filler. If you've got other graveyard synergy to, like, get value out of the mill, then this card goes from, like, fine to, to actively good, I think. It's only four, right? It's only four mana. Four mana for an 05 would obviously not be worth it, but four mana for a 2-5 is fine. It's a fine blocker. And four mana for a 4-5 starts to become, like, above power level, like, above, above grade on the curve. So obviously this card is, like, much better in some decks than others. But in general, on average, I think it's going to be pretty good. Pretty all right. Cycle that whale. Yeah, right. Have a four mana, seven, five. Crypt Lurker. Four mana for a three, four. When enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature or discard a creature card if you do draw a card. This is sweet. So you can trigger your sacrifice effects. You can bin a creature that's been answered in play already by like a pacifism effect. Or you can discard a card that you have no way of casting or you want to reanimate. Just filter away your bad cards in the late game. I like this card. Four mana for three four is like fine stats, so. Yeah, good card's good. Deathbloom Thad and Talad. Or yeah, you yeah, you'd sack this thing. Sack it a draw card. Deathbloom Thalad's another card that I'm just like really happy to see getting reprinted into a limited format. This is like perfect, right? It's a perfect three mana three two. Dies get a little bit a little bit of value. Hell yeah. Demonic Embrace, one black black enchantment to aura. Chain creature gets plus three plus one, has a flying. And there's a demon in addition to its other types. You can cast it from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding card in addition to paying its other costs. So plus three plus one in flying is a pretty good aura. That uh, even if you're just like playing this on turn three, even if you're not jumping a very large creature, you're still gonna murder someone. So you play a turn two, 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 and then you like embrace it on three and smack them for five. And now they're all like all set up to die by the, what is that turn six? Turn six or seven. It's pretty meaty. And then this sort of solves the problem of auras, that if they answer your card, you lose that value. This sort of solves it by being able to rebuy the aura later. But you will have to pay some life and discard a card in addition for the rebuy. I like this card. Um, I do like auras more than most, but I do like this card. I like demons more than most, too. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if this is going to see constructed play or not. It's hard to, it's a hard one to judge, but I don't think it's crazy. Auras that rebuy themselves tend to be like really valuable in boggle style decks because it helps them grind. It's not like so brutal when your card gets answered because then it's there to pull out of the graveyard later on. Usually boggle decks prefer more efficient cards, cards that are just like one mana, like the Griff Spoon, right? It's one mana plus one plus oh and flying, and then you can rebuy it for four mana. Much less all in this demonic embrace. This is also more powerful, right? And you're getting the plus three plus one on top of it. Which makes it like a better standard card, I think, than Griffspoon. Maybe. There just needs to be a home for it. Dress, always a good one to have in standard. Um, not a card I play in limited super often because it's so bad when you're in a top deck mode. But uh, but it's a card that I don't mind boarding in, especially in sealed. The slower your opponent's deck is, the more you like duress, right? The more expensive the removal is. It's terrible against Bane Slayer and Demonic Embrace. I mean, most cards are terrible against Bane Slayer. <laughs> That's fine. Eliminate one in a black destroy target creature planeswalker with converted mana cost three or less. So it's a smother that also hits walkers. That's sweet. A lot of people were asking me like what I thought about this one when it first got spoiled, and I was like, "Yeah, it's a, it's a spell that hits walkers, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what to add in terms of uh, commentary. Will it see play? Probably a little bit. I don't know. We've got some really good removal spells in standard right now, so the competition is fierce. Competition is very fierce, but a lot of times there's some value in like splitting up your removal suite." So we'll see. Fed an imp. Two mana for one two. Flyer can get it can gain death touch. So strictly a limited card, but it's fine. You can like plink in for a few turns and then uh, trade with a large creature with the death touch. Nice little card. Finishing blow five mana to destroy a creature or planeswalker. Instant speed. 
Yeah, this is about this is about where you want this to be. I think in a slower in a slower limited format. I think this is where about where you want your black removal spell to be. It's good. Oh, we got we got other removal spells though. We got grasp here too. A universal removal spell for five minutes. It's like clunky enough that you're not gonna play a ton of these. But you're still gonna pick it pretty highly. It's still a great card. You play like two right. After at a certain point, there's diminishing returns because you're slowing down the deck. Grasp of Darkness, on the other hand, you can you can pack one, pick one, this, and draft as many of them, as many of them as you want. Because even if it doesn't kill your opponent's creature, it's still it's still gonna help you eat your opponent's creature in combat, right? It's still still great, it's still gas. Also a good one to have in standard. Um, I think I like pretty much always see standard play, right? Doesn't this one see Pioneer play? Don't people play Grasp of Darkness and like Pioneer? Anyway. Gorman, six mana for a five five. As an additional cost to cast it, sack a creature, flying, trample. When there's battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So this card's sweet. The the way that you break the symmetry of Gormand is one, you have a five five flying trample. So even though both players sacrifice a creature, um, you're probably ahead because <laughs> you've got a five five. And then two, you can also build your deck around having things to sacrifice, like not caring about the sacrifice. Having recursive threats or threats that give you more value when they die, like Death Bloom Talon, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'll play that shit. In limited, right? And obviously, it's a limited card. Bloom Sower, 7 mana for an 8 6. When it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Yeah, this is the sort of card that doesn't appeal to me because it's so much mana. And it doesn't have any inherent value, so like once you finally play it, the opponent can just kill it. On the other hand, if you can ramp into it in limited, we'll see what the green's ramp spells look like. Because an 8-6 is pretty fucking huge. And then it also drains. That's the home I could see for it, is in like black green or something. Not gonna play this very often. I'll probably lose to it at some point though. Grim Tutor. Not the best limited card, but that's okay because uh, it's a mythic, so you're probably not going to play it limited anyway. Probably just here because it's a much needed rep reprint. I don't know. I don't know what the price of Grim Tutor was before. I'm just guessing. I'm trying to remember if I've ever played this card in standard. I don't think so. I don't think I played standard when Grim Tutor was around. I know I've cast this fucking card. And I think I've cast it outside of cube too. Some eternal combo deck. Oh shit, what up? It was in portal, so not legal in standard. Oh fair enough, fair enough. I don't think I played standard when portal was uh, new anyway. Hey, Vivigray, thanks for the 48 months and such. Hell yeah. It feels like we've had a bunch of tutors in Nuncy play. Well, that's not necessarily true. I was playing the uh, the tutor from your sideboard card pretty recently. Obviously, Fairy has seen a lot of play with Fires. This card's worse than those, though. <laughs> I think this card's worse than... Either of the cards that tutor from your sideboard that are playable and standard right now. Oh, shit, what up? Losing three lives is a big deal. Hey, B Dob, thanks for the sub. This is 17 months. Alright, moving on. Hooded Blightfang. Three mana for a 1 4 Death Touch. When a creature you control with Death Touch attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. When a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a walker, destroy that walker. Sure. I've seen people argue that Death Touch should just do that anyway. That Death Touch should just like kill walkers. There's not a, a ton of Death Touchers that are costed for constructed play anyway. Might as well make them slightly better. Or make walkers slightly worse, rather. Neat little Lord effect though, huh? Yeah, draining the opponent's relevant. It attacks for like two on its own. Two's not very much. Four toughness is good though.
Yeah, obviously limited playable. And pretty good. It's not like an embarrassing first pick. But I would probably take like the the wonky blue mind control over this for context. But taking Blight Fang over a removal spell is probably fine. Because it kind of is a removal spell, right? And then you can also get some drain out of it. Grasp. I think that's where it's close. Something like Grasp of Darkness versus Hooded Blight Fang. I think it's close. And you could probably do whichever you wanted. Early in the limited format, I'd be taking the Blight Fang to get more experience with it. Because you just don't see rares as often. But that's the sort of thing where if you're in like pack three and like signaling doesn't matter anymore, and you got Hooded Fife, Blight Fang versus Grasp of Darkness, you're probably taking whichever one your deck needs more based on like. Do I need more bodies versus do I need more instant speed interaction? As opposed to like just raw power level. Infernal Scarring, two mana, enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has when this creature dies, draw a card. Another fine reprint. I like this card fine. There's certainly loaded up a flyer with it before. It's got one of those clauses that makes it not not so like incredibly terrible if the opponent actually answers your thing, right? Kervik the Spiteful, two black black, three two, other creatures get minus one minus one. So, This ability is good. Obviously, you played in a deck where you're not going to murder all your own things. This ability attached to a 3-2 body is, I think, less good than Knight of Souls Betrayal. Because Knight of Souls Betrayal is so hard to answer, right? And, like, your opponent kind of needs a specific thing to answer some enchantment. And then it plays well alongside your sweepers and stuff. You're playing in a control deck. If you make the Spiteful, kind of is a little bit more restrictive, right? This card would have been absurd in Dominarium. Curse of Death's Hold was played in Standard. It was! Curse of Death's Hold, also better than Knight of Souls Betrayal and Kervek. I think Kurvek is the worst of the three, is what I'm getting at. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's situations where having the 3-2 body is better. It will draw you. This will be posted on YouTube. Kite Sail Freebooter. Another great reprint. Another great one to have in standard. Not a super early limited pick, but it, it does have flying, right? Totally reasonable card. Somewhere between like four and eight, right? That's where I'd pick this up. Usually try and get it on the wheel. If there's a nice removal spell in the pack, you're taking that over the freebooter. Trying to wheel a freebooter if you see it early. Liana Walker of the Dead. Two black black. Four starting loyalty. Plus one. Each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life. So that works well with the red black titan, right? Does something similar. And minus three target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. It starts with four loyalty, so it can pop something right from the get-go. And the minus seven is you get an emblem with at the beginning of combat on your turn, put target creature card from a graveyard into the battlefield under your control against haste. Pretty sweet emblem. Yeah, so so this is the difference of a mana, right? If this card cost three, I'd be excited about it. But it costs four, so I'm not excited about it. It's about where it's at. Oh shit, what up? It would still be worse than Liliana of the Veil, I think, if it costs three. Better than the late game, but worse than the early game. Since it would be a three-mana walker, and like the early game would matter more.
If it was a plus two, if it was a plus two, this would like that'd be pretty good. Going up to six loyalty with a four mana walker. I'm kind of glad it's not a plus three or a plus two. Hey, Boom J Boom, thanks the sub, thanks the 19 months. I'm comparing her to Liliana the Veil. Yeah, I'm also comparing. I'm also talking about like what would be playable in standard versus unplayable. And a mana difference is pretty big. It's the difference between like too good and, and not good enough in this case. The, the plus one's better. That's true. You don't think Liliana the Veil was good in standard? Uh, I don't know what standard you were playing. But that was like the tier one deck for a while, right? Fucking on barrier rights, Liliana. Anger cost three and a half. Yeah, exactly. Three and a half would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Sick combos. I don't The plus one is the same 9 out of 10 times. People are right to point out that it is different, though. It is it is certainly better on this 4 mana 1. Because it, it can become a win condition, right? Having an actual win condition there. Liliana the Veil never actually killed somebody. A lot of times you're in that super, super grindy mode. If you ever played a game with Liliana the Veil where you had to ult multiple times, you know what I mean? Or this would have actually just, like, killed them by that point. Would Black 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 be too good? Oh man, I think Black 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 would be perfect, actually. Too expensive for 8 rack. Yeah, too expensive for 8 rack. I think too expensive for everything. But, we'll see. We're trying out, maybe. We're, we're testing. Um... You think you'll see standard play? I would. That wouldn't like make me like. That wouldn't shock me to the point that like my eyes fall out of my skull or anything like that. But I, I don't. I don't think it will. Like long term, like after everyone's like done testing it, I think it's gonna be slightly not good enough. Like I said. Anyway, anywho, Liliana's devotee, three mana for a two three. Zombies you control get plus one plus zero. Oh. Uh, there are some zombies in this set. If you're in step, if a creature died this turn, you can pay two. If you do, get a two-two. Oh, not a bad little lord effect, huh? Not a bad little lord. I think it's like in roughly the same range as other three mana zombie lords we've seen. Can potentially generate more. Starting as a two-three instead of a two-two. Only pumping the front half is worse than what we've seen, but as like a complete package, it's probably fine. Oh, it's not a zombie itself, so it doesn't stack with other other copies of Liliana's Devotee. Yeah, that's much worse, huh? That's a good point. That's a good point. Usually the Lord effects will at least like bump each buff each other. And that's not happening with this one. It's probably enough to make it like not worth considering for constructed, but. Yeah. What about the art? Art's, art's pretty hot. <laughs> the zombie isn't like, yes, I will obey you, warlock. The zombie's like, <laughs> just appreciating the lack of shirt is what this zombie's, this zombie's doing. Zombie, this is main! All right, we'll lean on a standard bearer. And two in a black, three, one, flash, zombie knight. Two relevant uh, creature types there. When it enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Interesting. Yeah, we've seen similar cards to this. Certainly worse than um, the Midnight... Is it Midnight Guard? Midnight something? The 3-2 that every time your creature dies, you just like lose a life and draw a card. This is certainly worse than that, but that card's great. That card's phenomenal. 
In limited, this is mostly just going to be like a 3-1 that draws a card half the time. Every once in a while you get to draw three cards off of it, and that's going to be fantastic. If you play with sack outlets, obviously you have a little bit more control over it. Does this go into blue-black flash? I don't think so. I wasn't paying the I wasn't playing the two mana three one in blue black flash, so I think it would be hard for me to have room for this thing too. You, you, your creatures just ideally in blue black flash, your creatures aren't dying is the issue. So I think you care more about playing this in like a zombie deck or a night deck than you care about trying to fit into a flash deck. Hey Oriental, thanks for the sub. Sorry you can't catch the stream as often as before, but I appreciate the the fucking support. Hell yeah. Racto Sacrifice? Yeah, no, I mean, 3 minute for a 3-1 that draws multiple cards is it's pretty exciting. Mm, but even in, in Racto Sacrifice, like, the the Midnight thing is probably better, right? Just a better card. The Cat Oven deck. Liliana's Steward. 1 minute for 1-2. You can sack it to... Make an opponent discard a card. Only as a sorcery, of course. Zombie. I mean, if you are doing zombie tribal, then this is not the worst card ever, right? One drop, two drop, three drop. Like, curve out. And then when your opponent plays a large creature in the late game, and they, they brick the Liliana Steward, you can at least get a card out of their hand. In general, you don't want to play very many one drops in limited, because they get bricked, and then it's kind of like having a dead card. It's kind of like not having a card at all. Usually one drops are worse than having a land. This one at least will at least like trade with one of their cards. Steward and Devotee. Yeah, right. Like we've got a couple of cards. A couple of other zombies here that also like give you death triggers. So having something that self-sacrifices for value at that, then yeah, sure. If you could do it at instant speed, would it break the card? No, but but it would be obnoxious, right? They try not to have too much instant speed discard. Because then it becomes like much more likely that you actually can lock someone out of the draw step entirely. Like if you're recurring creatures, for example. They don't want it to be too easy to like soft lock somebody. Malefic Scythe. Two mana enters the battlefield with a soul counter. Equip creature gets plus one plus one for each soul counter. When a creature, cre creature dies, put a soul counter on the scythe and then you equip for one. So two mana, equip one, it's going to get plus one, one, plus one, plus one right off the bat. When that creature dies, then the next creature you equip is going to get plus two, plus two. I don't, I don't think this is a bad limited card. I've played similar cards in Constructed, but those cards were a little, even a little bit more efficient than Scythe. And were costed a little bit more aggressively. Real specific sacrifice type decks, right? I don't think I don't think Scythe makes the uh, translation in constructed, and I don't think most limited decks actually want it. But I think it's fine. You just need like one creature to die, and then all of a sudden you've got a reasonable equipment. There's some limited formats where one mana for an equipment that one mana to equip is just plus one plus one, like just flat that is fine, fine to good, right? Like that was a good card in Dominaria. So this card is is uh, at its base, not much worse than that. And then if you ever put a one one, if you ever get a counter on it, this is much better. And then it keeps on scaling. Yeah, so maybe I'm even under underestimating it a little bit. Yeah, equip one's really nice. Makes it real easy to like continue playing more threats and then like move the scythe around so that it's on something that's actually gonna die. I think this card would actually be a bit worse if the the costs were switched, right? If it was one to play and then two to equip. Reminds you of Blade of the Blood Chief. Yeah, Blade of the Blood Chief is what I was thinking of. Blade of the Blood Chief, though, was like costed for a rare, and you could sacrifice your other things to pump it. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I top aided an SCG open with Blade of the Blood Chief. The card was pretty explosive. If you put it on a, a sacrifice vampire, a little bit different. So it's a little bit different because it has to be on the creature that's dying. Anyway, mass black guard two minute for a two one flash. 
and then three mana gets plus one plus one. Yeah, it's fine. Fine feeler, right? Masker Worm is a sicko card to have in standard and uh, historic. Pretty happy to see that reprint. If a card's good enough for like Legacy Cube, it's probably good enough for standard, right? Sometimes it just murders people. Great option for reanimator decks and uh, mid range decks and ramp decks. Sometimes more controlling decks can have one on the top end as well. Top end sweeper. And most importantly, and you're not going to hear about this from every set review, but I'm going to get into it a little bit. Massacre Worm kind of looks like a penis. That's, uh, that's also worth discussing. Got this like pink head, the bendy shaft. Bendy shafts are good too. You can reach different places. Well, anyway, <laughs> next card <laughs> Mind Rot. Mind Rot. Three mana target player discards two cards. I used to think that Mind Rot was bad and limited, and I was wrong. That's totally fine. It's value, right? Value is always good. Mind Rot's a card that's actually better on the draw. Because your opponent starts, if they're on the play, they start with fewer cards. So they're going to have fewer options to discard, and getting hit by two cards is worse. At a certain point, like losing a card is less big of a deal. Right, the difference between eight cards and nine cards, not that big of a deal. The difference between six cards and five cards, huge deal. Six cards and seven cards, huge deal. So that's why Mind Rot matters, right? It's like bringing them from seven to five. Of course it doesn't impact the board, so the more slow the format is, the better Mind Rot gets. But often I'll board it in when I'm on the draw, and then just like not have it when I'm on the play. Necromentia, one black black sorcery, choose a card name other than a basic land card name. Search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with that name and exile them. The player shuffles their library, then get, creates a 2 2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. So it's another extraction effect. It's kind of nice to have an extraction effect around in case there's something. some deck that relies too high on. Uh, Highly on like one specific on one niche win condition or this busted combo deck, it gives you some kind of hate for it. I kind of wish it was target player instead of target opponent. In case you had like four of some dead card locked in your hand, <laughs> you could cash in, make some two twos. The person that dies because they like hit a four of out of their opponent's hand just dies to the like creating eight power is gonna feel so sad. And I'm here for it. Peer into the abyss, four black, black, black sorcery. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life. Round up each time. Half is a lot. So when you play this in limited, like say you're playing this in a sealed deck. So you play it when you like have like a few a bit more than 20 cards. You're gonna have like 12 cards left. Definitely gonna be discarding. Is that worth? And you're seeing like a lot of the deck. And you have like 10 turns to end the game. That's probably good enough. As always, like it kind of depends on what you're drawing into. Uh, yeah, Raku. It means you're searching. You're searching their deck. Target player is huge. Oh, yeah, target player loses half their life. It means that you can, uh... Set them up to die to attacks or something. This is probably a card that's, like, powerful enough that I'd probably play it in my sealed deck. But would expect to not cast it every time I drew it. 
infamous a copy. Thanks for the sub, thanks for the 20 months. Cool, cool, cool. Love it. Been rewatching uh, Community lately. It's good. The art? Yeah, the art's sweet, huh? Uh, some cute little faces. You wonder if it gets an animation? Ah, oh, it should get an animation. How would you animate it? Would they just be like squirming and jiggling? You could animate the like the liquid parts. Like that's <laughs> It's like they're it's like all the faces are giving birth to the other parts of the face. And so they could just be like there could be like moans and and like faces like squ squishing out of other faces. Or is it like they're eating him? Is it like they're eating the other faces? And then you hear more screams. And then you like pull back as, you, as the faces like eat more faces. Anyway, lots of ideas for animation. I think it's a really good idea. Pestilent Haze, one black black, choose one. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Room two loyalty counters from each planeswalker. That was a versatile little sweeper. A little worse against cat combo than the average sweeper, but maybe cat combo would be more likely to play this, huh? Certainly a fine limited card. Rise again, five mana, return target creature card from graveyard to the battlefield. Ah, good old Zombify. Totally fine. Sanctum of Stone Fangs, one in the black legendary enchantment shrine. The name of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of shrines you control. This card's sweet. Just by itself, it's like a cat loop, right? It's probably not worth it by itself. You need like a real specific deck. But just to, just with a second shrine, it starts to get deadly. And then three starts to become hard to race. Yeah, I like it. This kind of shit always ends up Dees. Dees are like better than it looks on paper, huh? Ill-Gotten Inheritance, yeah, right? The thing about Ill-Gotten Inheritance is you could play multiples, but it was fine as a one-of. Sanguine Indulgence. Four mana, costs three less if you get three more life this turn. Return up to two car target creature cards from a graveyard to your hand. So you can march in with that four three lifelinker that's also a common, trade in combat. One mana, rebuy it and probably play it on the, probably play it on the same turn. Rebuying two cards for four mana would be a little expensive otherwise. But if you can play this for one mana like 25% of the time or something, I don't know. And then at a certain point in the game, it doesn't matter what you're casting. Because you have like an excess of mana anyway. That card's probably fine. Value's always good, right? Value's always good. Silver Smoke Ghoul, three mana for a three one. Being a grand step. If you gain three more life this turn, return from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And then you can sack it to, gain, to draw a card. Oh, this is fucking sweet. Zombie va vampire. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess each um, mythos can have its own rules for how the undead work, but... Sure. Yeah, the, the flavor text doesn't actually explain anything. It's twice as undead. Un undead is basically alive. Yeah, two negatives. Suddenly it's a positive. Brains and blood. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Raccoon. Fuck the flavor. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like every every mythos can make up its own rules for like how zo how undead work and zombies and vampires and stuff. But I'm not a fan of this one. It just wouldn't work like that with every zombie or vampire mythos that I've come across before. 
an unintuitive thing. Because ghouls tend to be zombies that vampires make when they like don't want to turn them, right? So you would need like... And then of course, and then if a vampire dies, it becomes dust. So how would a necromancer reanimate a vampire? Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. The uh, the ability is sweet. That recursion, gain three life, recur this thing, sack it to draw a card. Those are all those are all sweet abilities. I look, I am looking forward to playing this card. Flavor uh, flavor aside, and we got that free recursion. I mean, I don't, I don't expect this card to see standard play or constructed play or whatever. But anytime you have that much text, anytime you can get things back for free. It starts to become interesting. A vampire got bit by a zombie. Yeah, right. A vampire got bit by a zombie, or a zombie got bit by, bit by a vampire. But I don't know. It still doesn't make a ton of sense. You just don't see those things happening. Food does gain three life. Food does gain three life. And creeping chill. Oh my. Oh my. So you're saying for modern? Hmm. It does have to pair with the creeping chill. But you can mill you can mill the silver smoke ghoul and not hit a chill that turn and then hit one later. It also makes sideboarding harder if you add silver smoke ghouls. It makes sideboarding harder because now you can't like cut the crippling chills without taking the ghouls out as well, and shaving one hurts the other. But maybe in like Pioneer, where regular dredge isn't quite a thing, but creep but chills around. Maybe that becomes interesting. Yeah, Pioneer Dredge, yeah. Um, it's a dredge activator. Oh, that's a good point. You can sack it, keep dredging some more. Maybe that does make it more interesting. Alright, you've sold me. You sold me on at least, like, testing it in Modern. Skeleton Archer. This is a reprint. 4 mana for a 3-3. Three, three, ping something. Sure. Fine. Not a um, super early pick, but a fine, uh, fine little pinger. Tavern Swindler. Another reprint. 2 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. You can pay 3 life, flip a coin. If you win the flip, gain 6. So... The, the reason that you would pay 3 life to uh, to flip this coin is if you were going to die, if you weren't going to gain the 6. Or uh, if you were in a high, and if you were in a game where you were losing and you wanted to increase variance to maybe put yourself in a better position. In this format, you have more reasons. You have more reasons to want to flip the coin. The um, the main one being that this is a uh, that there's a life gain deck that is supported. The enchantment every time you gain three life, spit out a two two. It's kind of a combo, right? It means you're spitting out a two two flyer every other turn. If you're winning half your flips. And if you've ever watched me play, you know I'm not winning half my flips. But imagine that you're playing. Imagine that someone with regular luck and statistic probability is activating the swindler. They don't win about half their flips, they're gonna get a 2 2 flyer every other turn. That's worth. They're, they're both on commons too. And they stack, you know, so you can have multiple. Churn some stuff out. Oh shit, what up? So normally not that not that exciting, but a little bit more exciting in the set than usual. Hey Sam, some random MTG you think's the sun? Is this six months? Half a year, our relationship's going places. It is indeed, it is indeed. Right now, it's going to the next card in the set review. These Guild Enforcer, one black for one, one flash. Whenever it or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. As long as the opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard, it gets plus two, plus one, and has death touch. So it's a rare, so it's not really gonna be part of the limited mill strat. I guess you're mostly playing this 
with the idea that it might get death touch, huh? One mana for a 3-2 with death touch would be pretty good, but I don't think it's going to be a death toucher early enough for it to really matter. Eight cards is a lot. Hmm. I guess if they're trying to play Uro. If they have Uro, though, like they, they probably don't care if you have a 3-2. Yeah. God, and then Uro shrinks it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine doing that work to mill your opponent to turn on your, your threat and make it a real threat? And they're just like, play my escape card! <laughs> Shrink your board! Dead you! God, that sounds awful. Seems weak. Seems real weak, yeah. Village rights, one black instant. It's an additional cost to cast it, second creature, draw two. A lot of people got excited about this one, and uh, for good reason. Like, for two mana, Thrill did a similar thing in instant speed. It was never really constructed playable, but uh, it was a fine limited card. You'd like sack your creature that, you, that your opponent targeted with removal, or put a pacifism on, or just like sack, sack a small thing in the late game to try, try and find answers. Sacrifice something that you wanted in the graveyard. Costing one instead of two, I feel, is big game. Makes it like actually interesting for Constructed. There's a lot of creatures in Constructed that you don't mind sacking to this too, right? One mana, one ones that leave a one one behind, things like that. Get that churn going. Yeah, this is beaten. It's like Thrill, except it's one mana. Veto Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Three mana for one three. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And five mana and creatures you control gain life link until end of turn. This is another payoff for the life gain deck in limited. Um Also in historic, right? There's that enchantment that whenever you uh Whenever you gain whenever your opponent loses life, you gain life. So you can go infinite. One of those costs three mana, and the other one costs five, but... But you can, like, play this on three, and then play the five mana enchantment, and, like, attack with a creature and trigger it. Probably not good enough, but interesting. Interesting enough to be worth checking out. More two card combos, yeah, more two card combos. You wanna play in the historic Soul Sisters? Yeah, maybe. Soul Sisters is in that range where it like wants to be like kind of aggressive too, and this has that aggressive bent to it. Gary, Grey Merchant. Yeah, doubling Grey Merchant's Drain. I played a lot of Grey Merchants lately. Maybe I'll play some more, huh? Walking Corpse. It's filler, but it's zombie, and zombies matter in this format, so you might actually be putting multiple of these into a deck. Which is Cauldron. Black. Two mana, second creature. Gain a life and draw a card. Well, it's a fine little card. You need a specific deck to want it, right? You need a deck with, like, recursive threats. Um, or creatures with like leaves play abilities. You need to activate this multiple times before you get your get your values worth. You don't want to put this into every single deck. It's a lot clunkier than uh than village rights. But could potentially do more over a super long game too. If like village rights is like the the draft version, which is cauldrons like the sealed version, right? All right, we're going to take another break. Yeah.